Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. So excited to have you here. Sorry about the long hiatus in between videos, uh, life stuff, you don't care, that's not what you're here for. You're here for my review, my spoiler free review of Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. This is the debut novel of Andrew Joseph White, and let me tell you, it was quite the ride. Now, uh, Mr. White himself is a trans, queer, autistic individual, and he poured all of that wonderful life experience into this novel and then just heaped a whole bunch of gore on top. Lots of gore. So let's get into what I really liked about the novel and then things that I think probably mm, I would have liked a little differently. So first and foremost, the novel is just unflinchingly brutal, which I appreciate. It takes place in a post-apocalypse in which a viral flood, as it's referred to, uh, has basically decimated most of humanity, and uh, it's causing a lot of problems, including like severe mutations for anyone who comes in direct contact with the virus. Um, and that's important because our main character, Benji, who is a 16-year-old trans boy, is trying to escape from the very Christian fundamentalist cult that has infected him with this virus in order to turn him into Seraph, which is this, like, bio-superweapon monster. Uh, and yeah, that's where we start. So, as for things that I like, this novel moves at a breakneck speed. Like, it really does not stop. From the first page through to the last page, it's just go, 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 which makes it's about 400 pages. I have a paperback, uh, advanced review copy. Uh, it made it go pretty quickly, I'm not gonna lie. The representation in this novel is outstanding, and Andrew does something very interesting. He makes his novel very queer and very diverse within the different kingdoms of queerness, if you will, uh, in such a wonderfully believable way that it would beggar belief to be like, oh, look at all these trans and queer kids in the post-apocalypse. Why are they all together? But he found a way to make it work that um, doesn't, like, beggar belief. So, like, hats off to Mr. White on that one, because that was, like, incredible. The characters themselves are really well written, I feel. Uh, in particular, our two leads, um, Benji and Nick. Uh, Benji, I think, starts off a little weak, like, only coming from a place of trauma, which I guess makes sense for his character. Uh, but eventually, like, as he's coming to terms with what he is, and the choices that he makes in this novel are so fascinating and so nuanced, that, like, by the end, I was like, this character is, like, brilliant brilliantly written. The other main character that we like really see from is Nick, who is a gay autistic boy, and um, it's clear <laughs> who the self-insert is a little bit. Uh, like I shared, Andrew Joseph White is autistic and queer and trans himself, uh, so like he makes, the, he makes the, the gay autistic boy like drop dead gorgeous. Yeah, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, Andrew Joseph White. But it's a really good portrait of uh, at least this person's experiences with autism from both the outside and the inside, which are very different, which I think highlights a lot of uh, what is misunderstood about autism and the way that it is experienced versus the way that it is seen. Uh, so that was great. What I also really appreciated about this is uh, Mr. White did not um, info dump to build his world. That's one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to things like sci-fi or fantasy, is just like, so much of the book is devoted to just being like, oh, and this gate was built by Thragnathor, the son of Thragnathon, and like, just all the shit that doesn't like, affect the story, but it's just there because like, clearly this person spent a hundred hours building a world before even starting a story. Not the case in this novel. You get what you need to understand the choices that are made and what is happening. And then the rest is kind of left up to mystery, which I actually really like. Um, I do feel that there could be a sequel to this novel, not to give anything away, but it ends in an ambiguous enough spot that I think a follow-up would work if it was handled as well as this first outing was. But now on for my criticisms because while I love the book, it is not perfect and my biggest complaint with it is that it is written in the present tense. So instead of saying, oh, he got up and closed the door, it's he gets up and closes the door. 
and that's just exhausting to read. It's a stylistic choice, and I understand that. It does help the action keep moving forward, but I really dislike books that are written in the present tense, unless it's for a very specific reason, and I'm not sure that this novel has that reason to be 100% honest. Outside of that, a few of the tertiary characters could have been fleshed out a little more. Some of them did feel like they were just boiled down to their gender or sexual identity, and that was pretty much their whole shtick. Um, I understand that not every character can be super fleshed out, but like they all sounded the same, which is my biggest gripe when it comes to writing. Um, because I come from like a theater background where I'm so used to like reading a play and people have like their own distinct voices, when I run across fiction where in particular the tertiary characters uh, do not have their own voices, it's sort of like, mm, could they have all just been rolled into one person to do the same thing then? Because like, what's the point of having multiple characters if they don't feel like multiple characters? This criticism, however, does not extend to the leads in the novel. They felt fully fleshed out and fully realized. So some other things to know going into this novel is it is very brutal. Like it does not stop. It is intense. Um, People with religious trauma should be aware that there is a lot of that in this. People with trauma and baggage around transphobia. Obviously, like, hey, it plays a big part in, uh, in Benji's life. I would assume in Andrew Joseph White's life. I know it plays it in my life. Um, so just be ready for that if you're going into it and you are a trans person. And the other thing is gore. If you cannot handle gore and body horror in particular, uh, you might want to rethink this one because it is very graphic in the monsters, the graces as they're called, and what happens to Benji, and like all of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it's pretty gory, and it's really funny too, because I looked at uh, Andrew Joseph White's uh, Twitter feed because uh, the book released early. It was supposed to come out the 22nd, and I planned all this content to come out before it, before it dropped, but I, uh, it published early, um, but he was saying how he actually um, scaled down the amount of gore and body horror in this, and I saw a very ominous tweet. I can't wait to write adult. So more YA fiction is probably on the way from Mr. Andrew Joseph White, which is just a fun name to say, but also I would be on the lookout for a adult offering, quote unquote, that, um, if he scaled back in this one, I really shudder to think what'll happen when when the uh, when the gloves come off and he's allowed to write whatever he wants to write. It'll be interesting. But yeah, overall, my review of this book, um, it was really good. It was a great uh, first outing for a uh, for for a novelist, and I'm very excited to see what Andrew Joseph White does with the rest of his career because. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is going to end up on a bunch of bestseller lists. Um, a lot of people were very excited for this one, and I think the excitement was justified. So yeah, Hell Followed with us, Andrew Joseph White. Go out there, pick it up, support queer artists, and if you like you some body horror, you're gonna love this one. So there it is, my friends, my honest review of Hell Followed with us by Andrew Joseph White. Um, what should I read next? What should I review next? What list should I make next? What what video essay should I make next? You you all tell me because you're all smarter than I am. Do my job for me. <laughs> but as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell, I guess. YouTubers say that. I'm not sure I know what the bell does, but hit it. Do it. I dare you. You won't. Uh, follow me on the rest of the socials on TikTok, Jen Insight, uh, Instagram, and Twitter, Jen underscore Insight. And once again, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. Love you.